Hello, everybody. I just wanted to start off tonight by thanking everyone who came out Sunday to donate to our teddy bear drive. We have a lot, a lot of donations going on right now. And this is evidence right here of when you are doing something good for the community, how amazing it can be and how the turnout can be if you all work together. We are collecting teddy bears and stuffed animals for the children at the Levine Children's Center. This is what we collected so far just on Sunday. And as you can see, they are all family right now. And some of them have personal notes on it from the girls from Thompson Connect and Matthews. And this is all of the bears, the teddy bears, stuffed animals that we have collected so far. And again, some of them have personal notes on them from the girls at Thompson Connect and also at Time Out Youth. We spent an hour at Time Out Youth doing cards and letters and positive affirmations and notes to the kids at the Levine Children's Center. And we are so proud of the collections that we have taken up so far. I will step back so you can see the whole table. I have not even counted them yet, but it's a lot. We also have some over here in the boxes. So we have a lot of donations so far. We are still collecting. Here's another one with a personal note on it so that the kids, when they get it, they also are getting a personal note from the people that donated them. We have bags of stuffed animals and animals, teddy bears and everything. We are taking donations all the way up until March 15th, we will be updating the flyer and sending it out so that you can post. So again, we are collecting teddy bears and stuffed animals for the children at the Levine Children's Center. And you can add a special note so that they will see it. A lot of the animals that we already have have special notes on them. There's so many animals here. I cannot go through all of them right now and read the notes, but we will be taking them to the Levine Children's Center and actually meeting the kids as soon as we get the go. Because of the flu epidemic, we have not been able to go, but that's okay because that just gives us an opportunity to keep collecting, keep collecting. So I wanna start off by giving a shout out to the people who have donated so far. So I am looking at my post right now. And if you go into Butterfly Visions Project, you will see the post of everyone that has donated so far. So, so far we have had Miss Gray, author Trisha Duckworth, Julie Laney, LaShonda Pride, Allie Virtuous, Gina Richards, and organizations such as Making Connections with Allie and Shay, Thompson Child and Family Focus, Pineville Rehab and Living Center, Time Out Youth, Carter Lawn Care, and Calvary Free Will Baptist Church. We are going to be donating these wonderful stuffed animals. They're brand new. They have to be brand new because they do not want to um, bring in any outside germs. That's the reason why we have not been able to visit because of the flu epidemic that has hit Charlotte really, really bad. Um, so we cannot go visit. So that means that there is more opportunity for you to donate more stuffed animals, more teddy bears. They must be brand new though. They have to have tags on them or be packaged. We cannot collect um, stuffed animals that have been used so that it cuts down on germs and viruses and bacteria and so forth and so on. So please continue to donate. I'm taking donations until March 15th. I'm gonna update the flyer and put it out there for you. You can mail in your donations. I've had some people, as you saw in the boxes, that mail their, their donations to me. If you do not live here in Charlotte, um, you can also drop them off to me. Unfortunately, with everybody being so far out, I can't 
cannot go and pick them up from everybody. Um, I'm only one person with 20 people that are trying to donate. So I would prefer you drop them off. I will try to be as convenient um, to you and as accessible to you as possible. Um, but did you see all of those bears? This is just a picture now. If you go to Butterfly Visions Project and like our page, you will be able to get updated on the teddy bear drive. And please, please continue to donate up until March 15th. I will be putting up a new flyer soon. So thank you to everyone who has donated so far. I see we have some of our donators that are watching now. Ms. Gina Richards, thank you so much for donating. Hello, Ms. Sonia. I need to get past and get your donations. Thank you for donating. Hello, Ms. LaShonda. Thank you for donating. We appreciate you, sweetheart. And we have Felicia on the line with us right now, who um, we are going to be talking to tonight. Um, we were not able to, um, let me turn this around so you can see me and my ugly face. Let's see. There we go. <laughs> so we were not able to, um, uh, for me to get someone or connect with someone be during National um, AIDS HIV Awareness Day, but I did meet the wonderful Miss Felicia, um, and someone recommended her to me, and she decided or said that she would join us so that she can talk to us about her work in the community. So I hope that she will stay online. I have some more announcements later, but let's please welcome Miss Felicia Moore. Hi, Miss Felicia. How are you? Well, I'm fine. How are you? I am doing great. I have a sick child at home, and um, so everything is okay. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was isolated so that I can talk to you and give you my full attention. Um, so, Miss Felicia Moore, I was looking up some information mm -hmm. um, about um, HIV and AIDS. And mm -hmm. I wanted to share, because I heard something on the radio about two weeks ago um, that said that Charlotte, North Carolina was the highest HIV and AIDS diagnosed city in North Carolina. Um, yeah, I was reading about that. And this has been a statistic for Charlotte for the last four years from what I looked at so far. Um, mm -hmm. Where are you located at? I'm in the east side of Charlotte. Okay, so you are in Charlotte. Okay, yes. so if you don't mind, I wanted to read some of these comments from the um, HIV Plus magazine. Um, it's an article that was written on November 22nd, 2017. And it says that, um, Though it's one of the most at-risk cities in America, Charlotte, little progress has been made to combat the issue. What's taking so long? So some of the things that I read, um, it said that um, Mecklenburg County, which is Charlotte, suffers from a rate of 30.4 new diagnoses per 100,000 people, more than twice the national average and nearly two times the norm in North Carolina. The cases are heavily concentrated in low-income neighborhoods in Charlotte, a recent report shows. Now, this was back in 2017. Mm -hmm. So um, it went on to say that despite these statements, Mecklenburg County, which has one of the highest HIV infection rates in the nation, which is pretty serious, in the nation, mm -hmm. lacked efforts in expanding treatment as prevention strategies. Um, one of the prevention strategies that I read about that they were suggesting is... Um, turning in needles um, mm. for those that use needles as drug, drug, drug users. And this is a program that is helped in other cities, other large cities that are dealing with the HIV AIDS ep epidemic. But yet Charlotte has done basically nothing. Um, it says that um, the commissioner, Trevor Fuller, of rain told the Charlotte Observer that it appears county leaders have failed to make HIV prevention a priority. Mm -hmm. um, he says he doesn't understand it. We have had this problem for years. I don't know why we haven't addressed this with urgency. And then Jason Foreman McMaster said, which stood out to me in this article, he works as a benefits manager at Rain, which is the um, HIV AIDS um, organization here in mm -hmm. Charlotte and throughout the nation. He said that. Um, in Mecklenburg County, we talk and we talk. 
Foreman McMaster said, but unless it's a new sports stadium, we don't take action. So Mm -hmm. that really stood out to me because we just had CIAA, which you know is a big Mm -hmm. deal here. Mm -hmm. Um, And we know all the hype and all the media that the CIAA has gotten for the last few years, especially since um, we've been fighting to keep it, which we now Mm -hmm. know that we lost it to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Um, But yet they're not dealing with the HIV AIDS epidemic here. Um, how do you feel? What do you, how do you feel about what's going on here, right here locally, but then, you know, just being an advocate, how do you feel about the epidemic that continues to be an issue and how communities are handling it? How do you feel about it? It angers me because there's prevention education that can be set forth in schools, but I was told that since Charlotte is a Bible Belt, we cannot bring education into the schools. Um, And then when we have um, workshops or someone come out and try to educate, we have no one to show up. So I don't know if is the city. I know the city is not doing anything at all, um, and the people is not. Mm-hmm. I think they're scared to come out and be educated, and they just believe it, there's a lot of stigma and a lot of myths out there that they're believing, and they just want to sweep it under the rug. But we, we as African American, which is that's who we're targeting. As to get educated and because mm-hmm. our rates are very high. Um, we need to reach as many African Americans as possible. We really do. That's I true. Think something, something needs to be done. It's been over 30 years now. It's, instead of getting better, we're getting worse. So it, something needs to be really done about it. And I worked CIAA and I seen all the vendors and the only health vendor I seen was Norvon Hill. And I'm wondering why they didn't reach out to Rainy because it's since it's affecting all African American people and mm-hmm. and Latin American. Why didn't they reach out and say, Well, you know what? Set up a booth. Let's let's do some testing. Let's get let's get as many people tested as possible. I, I feel like right. there's more needs to be done before we can actually get the rates down. Yeah, um, I think, you know, just as we, I I talk about, you know, educating our kids and it starts at home, when it comes to educating people about HIV and AIDS, it starts in our communities. And so if our communities and our uh, politicians and those that are in office um, in these organizations in corporate America are not speaking up about it and doing anything about it, then it's really hard to educate the community as a whole when those that are leading the community aren't doing anything. And almost four articles that I read were talking about how the leaders of Mecklenburg County and Charlotte are not doing anything. They're not making it a priority. It it, it angers me because I've seen, I've been an advocate for 14 years and I've seen nothing I seem to get worse. So right. we, we truly um, need something done. I just wanted to share some statistics um, because I think that when we're talking about things like this, the statistics are really important. Did you have some that you wanted to share before I shared what I was going to share? No, you share yours. I didn't even, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared. I'm Oh, this no, came you're with fine. a little story. I know <laughs> the statistics in Charlotte, they have the actual zip codes that are badly hit with um, HIV and AIDS, like 28208, 28215, 28216. Mm-hmm. And the list mm-hmm. goes on. It hits, it's worse on the east side and the west side of Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And yes. um, it, it if they know, then if they know that it's worse and they know who to, we need to target people, especially homeless people. Let's get them, mm-hmm. some homeless people, I know I've met some HIV positive homeless people that doesn't have, that don't have a doctor at all. I, right. I feel like we should 
test as many people. I mean, they go out to the gay clubs and they forget about home, um, heterosexuals. It, it, it right. just, it bothers me. I, it bothers me a lot. I'm, I don't know what, yes. to, what else to say to educate. That's, Yes. Well, it's clearly it's clearly a problem that there's no education, that there's no um, there's nothing in place to change the statistics. I would think that they didn't want first 40, 48 coming here because they didn't want people to see the crime that's in Charlotte. But you would think that they wouldn't want Charlotte as the nation's leader of HIV AIDS either. You would think that the fight that they put to keep first four eight and to keep the you know the CIAA and All Star Weekend and so forth and so mm -hmm. on, you would think that they would put that much energy in to reducing the HIV AIDS rates um, mm -hmm. here in Mecklenburg County. But it's not just it's not just here. Um, the statistics that I looked up um, on the CDC site as mm -hmm. of 2017, 38,739 people received an HIV diagnosis in the U.S. Um, it says that the number of new HIV diagnoses remained stable between 2012 and 2016. Mm -hmm. So very quickly, let me turn this around so people don't think I'm just reading. Um, very quickly, it says new HIV diagnosis in the U.S. So if you look right here, it says Black male-to-male -male sexual contact. So that means Black homosexual men you see that they are leading with 9,807 new cases. Hispanic mm -hmm. um, gay men, white gay men, those are the top three. And then you see that Black men, heterosexual contacts, and Black women, heterosexual contact, come next. So mm -hmm. African Americans are leading pretty much in every category, in mm -hmm. homosexuality and heterosexuals. And then you have Hispanic women heterosexual and then white women heterosexual mm. that's pretty scary yeah, but, that's pretty that's not, scary. but it's not surprising though because african americans have mm. unfortunately led the epidemic since the very beginning um and the numbers did decrease a little bit um down here if we go down doo -doo 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 -doo, let's go up let's go up Okay, so with gay and bisexual men, for whites, there was a decrease of 14%. African Americans remained stable. Hispanic Latinos increased by 12%. So that's something that we need to be looking at, too, because they're still minorities. Hispanic and Latinos have increased 12%. Um, when we look at ages, so this is by age. New HIV diagnosis in the US 2017, you see that the leading group is 25 to 34 year olds. And look at that, 13 to 24 year olds. Mm. That's scary. Oh, I have yeah, an 11 yeah. year old. I have an 11 year old. That's very scary. 13 to 24 is the second highest. 25 to 34 is the, the top numbers or the top ages for diagnosis in 2017. The, these numbers are unfortunately shocking, but not surprising. Um, it says that heterosexual women, there's a decrease of 8%, heterosexual men, a decrease of 9%, but African-American women and Latina women are still higher so that's a lot. Those are a lot of statistics that people need to pay attention mm -hmm. to and talk to their kids about. Um, mm -hmm. Because with 13 to 24 years old, they are the highest being diagnosed right now. That's our children. Yeah. And something needs to be done. They're actually having sex and younger than when we were growing up. So... <laughs> It yes. needs to start <laughs> in the home. I'm sorry, my child is nine and I've started talking about HIV and AIDS and um, sexual education with her. So mm. it's, it's a lot. Yes, I've thing. already started myself. I've started mm -hmm. myself because um, my kids are 11 years old. Um, mm -hmm. I have twins and, you know, 
already they're talking about girlfriends and boyfriends and who they like and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, you have to start talking to them young. As soon as they show interest, (laughs) it's time to talk. So, yeah, it's time to talk. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, I think that there is a difference in parents that nowadays than it was when we were younger. Because I know that parents, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever years ago, they didn't talk to their kids about sex as openly as they do now. So I think that that has changed. But are they talking to them about the important stuff? Not just about wearing condoms and not just about Mm -hmm. don't bring no babies home, but are you talking about STDs? Are you talking about HIV? Are you talking mm-hmm. about AIDS? Are you talking about the l- long-term effects of having having sex and so forth mm-hmm. and so on? Are those the kind of, kind of conversations that we're having with our kids? It needs to be, when I was growing up, my, my sex as a kid, uh, education was keep your legs closed and your dress shirt down. That yes. was it. <laughs> Everything I learned was from school or a friend or somewhere else, but I, you, I think the open conversation with your kids and to let them see um, what's going on and not just can you get pregnant, but you this is what you can get. You can get HIV, you can get AIDS, you can get syphilis, you can get gonorrhea and HPV and all this other stuff. And I've, I've, I guess I'm just used to educating because I I started with my nephew and he's 26, 27 now. So I've started with him and then he became an advocate. So mm-hmm. he, he's trying to teach his uh, friends, this is what needs to be done. You need to use a condom. Condom is not 99% accurate, you know, effective. Yes. This is what abstinence, use abstinence until you marry. I know I can... It's hard. I know sometimes when people you just it just happened, but abstinence. I, I can't stress how the importance of abstinence or quit stop the risky behavior and stop the we need a drug uh a syringe exchange program. We we need yes. stuff to be put into place for us as a people, not just African Americans, we need education. We need to, we need a lot of things that right. Charlotte just is not offering. They've cut, yes. they've cut funding for everything here. So it's, it's hard. It's very hard. We have a actual HIV positive people who are out to give the disease to other people. And Yes, the, and we do that too. Yes, the disease does not have an actual look. So you should be careful with who you date for the single people or even the married people that are, you know, being a, adulterous. We, it needs, to, something needs to be done and the conversation needs to be had. Are you HIV positive? Can I see your test results? Can we both get tested together? It, it needs to happen. Uh-huh. It really does. Yes, you mentioned um, a few things. Um, one, uh, first of all, educating our community, educating our families and our children. You also mentioned the needle exchange program, which is working in a lot of major cities. Um, and it is on the table with Charlotte right now, even though it has not been approved and doesn't seem to be a priority. Um, but also you talked about um, you know, abstinence, using condoms, and the fact that condoms are not always um, 100%, uh, uh, 100%, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought, Um, accurate when it comes to preventing diseases and so forth and so on. So our children need to know that when you have sex, you are taking a risk, whether you're using condoms Mm -hmm. or you're using barriers or something like that, you are still taking the risk of contracting a disease. And so Mm -hmm. I like what you said that when you, before you become sexually active with someone, let's admit, all of us um, have had sex. (laughs) We're all Mm -hmm. grown, we're all adults. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, our our children eventually will do it. We hope that they won't do it until they get married. And we hope that they will do it with someone who is disease free and is not going to put their Mm -hmm. life in danger. But the truth of the matter is, is that we can't 
always stop our children or we can't always mm -hmm. stop, stop our nieces and nephews people that from having sex. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's eventually going to happen, whether we like it or not. Um, so I, I don't know. For me, I, I do teach abstinence, abstinence to the twins. But for me, um, and I agree with you, that we have to have these conversations before we actually lay down with people. Um, mm -hmm. I know with uh, my husband, and <laughs> it's a little bit much for me to say, but I'm going to share it because it's, it's relevant. Um, with mm -hmm. my husband and I, I asked him for his papers before we ever did anything. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a practice that I started um, probably, I want to say 20 years ago, is anyone that I was dating or I was seriously interested in or something like that, I would ask them, um, when was the last time you were tested? Um, do you know what your status is? And then I would ask them for papers. And if they didn't have papers, then they they weren't we weren't going there <laughs> um and i think that we need to teach our children we need to teach our girls we need to teach our boys um so what are some other things that you feel that we should be talking about to our families and our children when it comes to hiv and aids right now there's prep i think everybody knows what prep is you take travada to it says to prevent uh, becoming mm -hmm. infected with HIV. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say it takes more than one pill because yes. you still need a barrier, whether it's a female condom, whether it's a male condom, dental dam, you still can get HIV from oral sex. Yes. You still can, you, you need a dental dam. It takes more than one pill, but they're pushing PrEP on the HIV negative people and I would say you can use PrEP but use a barrier use a, a condom and it, all that um, but I think the thing is to educate to let's test let's get out and test it takes 10 years to detect HIV from even showing mm -hmm. up in your in your blood system and be careful of who you meet on Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. any kind of social media. I, I think I can't stress that enough. Like I said, AIDS doesn't have a certain look. You can't be, we, we all, when um, AIDS first came out, we, we all thought of AIDS as someone who's a uh, straight hair, fine hair, skinny person, dark skin. That's what mm -hmm. we, um, we associated HIV with and anybody right. can be walking around HIV positive or with AIDS we we never know so I think right I think their first date or when it gets to that level of sexual activity it's okay to go to and get tested together that's that should be one of the yes, first days when you become sexually before you become sexually active <laughs> It's okay. Yes. It's okay. Yes. I, I, I want to tell you a little a bit about me because I'm very forward forward with my life. If you if you see my Facebook page, every year I celebrate around July 20. HIV positive for 14 years. Um, mm -hmm. when I met this guy when AOL was out and. You had to dial up a number. You had to use your phone line to dial up, and it, he was in the chat room, and mm -hmm. he he um we date we dated and we were sexually active, and um never thought anything about it. Um, I didn't know what HIV and AIDS was. Only well, I didn't know one person that went to school with me, and um, you know you we. I'm just like the rest of the people. You don't just brush it off. Oh, okay, I'm not going to. Uh, so someone text, email me, or I can't think of how the chat room was back then, but they sent me a message and said, you need to watch him. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know how we are. Sometimes we could be, oh, she's just a hater, you know. 
and mm -hmm. I started getting sick. I, I started losing weight. I went from a size 18 to a size 10, lost hair. I had um, lesions all over my body. Thinking that everything is fine. I'm catching the flu and pneumonia. It's, it's okay. And um, I couldn't breathe. My mom got concerned and rushed me to the hospital. And um, I was told at 1 o'clock a.m. on July 25th, I, I won't forget it because they were supposed to give me the results earlier. They said, Miss Moore, you, um, we didn't tell you you were HIV positive. I said, no. I, you know, I'm shocked. And the only thing I could think about was dying. And I was like, oh, okay, I can't die. I, I haven't had a child, uh, hadn't gotten married. Then I'm thinking, what would my family say? And I'm, you know, it just, I went down into a depression and um, mm -hmm. stayed in the hospital because I had pneumonia in both lungs. And um, they said, Miss Moore, I'm glad you came in because you could have died if you'd have stayed out any longer without coming to the hospital. And, and you know, I'm sitting here. It was July. I'm sitting here. I told my parent. I, well, I told my mother because my father had passed away. I told my mother, and I, she just started praying. And um, and I told my sister, and she started praying and started coming up with Bible scriptures and everything. And I'm like, okay, well, Felicia, you're not. This is not you. You're not gonna stay in a depression because of what some man mm -hmm. did to me, did to you. So I had. Um, I got out the hospital. So I'm getting up. We're going to see any kind of support group. This was 2005. Any kind of support group I can. I found a support group, which helped me tremendously. Rain helped me tremendously um, as I was going through my depression. And in December, I told my story the first time on World AIDS Day. And I never, I said, okay, this feels good. You know, let me backtrack. Because the health department came to my house and said, well, can we get his name? So I gave him the guy's name. And um, I called him. I said, well, I'm letting you know I'm HIV positive. He said, welcome to my world. Hung up the phone. That was it. Wait, he never what? told me. He Wait, no. Whoa. He yeah, said, he what? Said, welcome, to, welcome to my world. Start laughing. So he, he, said, oh. he said, I hope you die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Yes, yes. Then I seen him oh my years later, and he said, "Oh, you're not dead yet." I'm like, <gasps> no. And then when Facebook became very popular, he tried to request a friend, and he was like, "Felicia, you holding hatred. You should not hold hatred to him." I told him, "I forgive you." I just and then I walked away. Never thought about anything him at all. Um, then five years later, um, I got pregnant. I met my daughter's father. I told him because I'm I'm very forward. I tell anybody I'm HIV positive. It's either you deal with it or you can just walk away. I'm giving you two options. Two options: either you deal with it or walk away. And um, by that time, my numbers were good. My CD4 count was uh, up, and because my CD4 count, when I was diagnosed, was a 19, which is AIDS status. Anything under 200 is AIDS status. And um, mm. I, I mean, I, I became pregnant. I've encountered a nurse that said, why would you do that? I said, do what? She said, why would you put that baby in that kind of predicament and knowing you're going to die? I'm like, I'm not gonna die. You know, this is, I know what I'm doing. This is, I'm not gonna die. And my God says my child will not be HIV positive. So I changed my medication. I did everything the doctor told me. I, throughout my nine months, my daughter is HIV negative. She's nine years old. And she comes with me every time I speak, any advocacy, I'm at every AIDS walk, she's there. Um, she knows my health status. She deals with it, and she will very much be vocal if someone talks against me. So, to me, I'm blessed 
I would like to see people. I talk because I want to see people. I don't want to see people go through what I went through. I, I went from 20 medications to five. And mm -hmm. all I can think about is I'm blessed because I've seen people who, who've had kids that are HIV positive. And I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of people die from the disease that we can prevent. And we have chose as a city not to not to talk about it, to keep it hush hush, to be like we used to do, just sweep it under the rug. And I think I, I'm not, I even called out churches to educate on mm -hmm. World Day Day, which is December first. I've called out churches. No one responded. My the church that I just left, he gave me my platform. And okay. um, he gave me my platform. I came out to my church. I got kicked out of one church. You got HIV kicked out of the church for, for being HIV. It, what, what was it? Hmm? So they kicked you out of the church because of your status. Yes. I had instead of out, embracing you. Mm -hmm, I had came out then I had became pregnant. And mm -hmm. they were like, is this what you do? Is this what you do? Have sex, and so you give it to someone else. So I, so they said, well, we can't have this at the church. I was like, I was hurt, very much so hurt, and I went to the church that I was in, and he embraced me. He gave me my platform. I I held classes and workshops. I got chance to travel. Um, and become an advocate. I'm a um, certified HIV AIDS educa educator. Um, I love what I do. I love meeting people. But the thing that hurts is the stigma. Um, mm -hmm. I'm stigmatized all the time. It's hard to get a doctor. It's hard to get a dentist. It's, it's just hard for people that are HIV positive. I have a lot of friends that don't even go anywhere because they're scared that what people might say or what people this what people might say um it, it's hard it, it really much is hard i'm sure it is um so you have been hiv positive you said since for 14 years since 2005 mm -hmm. yes okay um and your daughter is hiv negative yes um now her father how about her father i know it's personal mm -hmm. but it's, and he's negative as well mm -hmm. okay um so tell me i know when aids and hiv first came out they said they say that there's no cure and we know that that is still a fact correct yes okay so um, if there is no cure, um, then what, how are you, what kind of things are you doing to remain healthy and um, to keep, keep going? Because, you know, the, the young man or the monster, I don't even want to call him a young man, monster that gave you HIV from what I'm understanding, he knew that he had HIV. Oh, yeah, he did. He did know. He did. Because and so me and several others. Yeah, so he knew that he's he was HIV positive. Now, mm -hmm. in some states, that is against the law to knowingly have sex with someone and give them HIV AIDS. I don't know if that's if that's here. Is that here? I'm not sure about that. It is a criminalization. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have you pressed charges against him or has any um, criminal action been taken he, against him? He was in jail for a while and he, now he's okay. out. Okay, all right. Well, how, what are you doing to remain healthy and to, to keep going and being an advocate in the community? What, how, what is your daily life like to take care of you, if you don't mind sharing? My daily life. Oh, I work all the time. Um, <laughs> I, my daughter is helps me keep going. You know, mm -hmm. we. Um, I I would like to say she changed my life. 
Um, mm-hmm. Because I was living a very risky lifestyle. With I was promiscuous, and um, she she saved me. Um, I work. Um, I volunteer. Like I said, I do advocacy work. Um, but she's right there to keep me going. And um, I don't really think about it. I, I really, the only time I think about me being HIV positive when I take my medication. And then it just many, goes away and I'm just normal. How many medications are you taking? I know at one point you said you were taking 20. How many are you taking now? I'm taking five. Five. Well, that's a that's a big difference. Oh, so yeah. that means you must be, you must be doing something right. Yes, I'm undetectable. I'm undetected, and I just found out my CD4 count is 960. So that's really good. So I'm I'm that is good. I'm happy. Yes. Um, when it comes to your diet, did you change your diet? Did you change your lifestyle? What kind of changes did you have to make once you found out that you were HIV positive? What kind of positive changes did you make in your life? I did, I did change my diet for a while. I need to go back to it because fries not mix anymore. Um, I changed my diet. <laughs> I think we all time. need to, to eat better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Exercise. I walk, I walk like an hour a day. Um, and then when I'm at work, I walk. Um, okay. I do medica- uh, meditation. I think mm-hmm. that's the best thing. When when my daughter goes to sleep and it's nothing but quiet, I just meditate. Music helps me a lot. Music. I'm listening to music, writing. I'm a Girl Scout troop leader, so that takes up most of my time. And it, I don't have time to think about being sick, being depressed. Um I try to reach out to the people that I've met along my journey of having HIV and I try to uplift them and get them out. I just like the com- being in the community. It, it it makes me feel so much better. Yes. Yes. Well, I really um, appreciate you doing this with me tonight. Um, I cannot imagine what you've been through. Um, I don't want to say fortunately, but I have not been diagnosed with HIV AIDS. I really don't, I I can't say that I understand, but what Mm -hmm. I can say is that I admire you for going out in the community, being an advocate, sharing your story, um, doing this podcast with me, being live Mm -hmm. and talking about it um, because I do believe, like you said, that you have friends who don't even want to go out because they're scared of the the stigmatism and Mm -hmm. how people are going to see them. Um, But I could say the same thing, too, as being a a sexual assault survivor, being a domestic violence survivor. Mm -hmm. Um, When I first started talking to people and sharing my story, I was concerned about how people would see me because Mm -hmm. I didn't live a very healthy lifestyle before. Um, I I probably had the same background as you. I was very promiscuous. Um, You know, I I dated all the time. I don't think I was ever single. Um, You know, I had a lot of risky behaviors. I had a lot going on in my life. A lot of things that I did that, that were not good, that were not right. And so I was worried about people looking at me like, who is she to sit up here and talk about this, that, and the third? But to me, because I've gone through all that and because I've done those things and because um, I'm not perfect, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, a lot of those mistakes were due to the abuse that I went through and um, being a victim at a young age and so forth and so on. But a lot of things were because of just strictly bad choices, unfortunately. Um, Mm -hmm. But those bad choices, I'm able to help other people now. Um, And I'm sure that, you know, sometimes I'm sure that it's crossed your mind, you know, what if I didn't do this? Would I be in the status or I'm sure you mm-hmm. question yourself or have question yourself. Um, I all the time. <laughs> so I really <laughs> applaud you. I really applaud you for sharing um, because I can't imagine how I would react if my mm-hmm. doctor told 
me that I really don't know how I would react Mm because a lot of people feel as a death sentence. Um, But you are living proof, 14 years living proof that it's not a death sentence, that you can Mm -hmm. live and healthy. You can, you can have a child that does not have, you know, the same Mm -hmm. diagnosis. Um, You can have a relationship. You can have someone that's going to accept you for you and love you for you. Um, Mm -hmm. That is a test within itself. And I'm so proud of you. And I, I'm, I'm amazed at you right now. (laughs) Um, I'm sorry. (laughs) Because I just think that what you have to offer um, is, is so amazing. And a lot of people do not, do not have the strength to do that. And you do. And I want you to continue sharing your story and continue advocating. Um, because I think you're an amazing person to, to be able to do that. You know, I was thinking <clears throat> when I was telling my family about the podcast, I said, this might be the last time I tell my story because I know, so you got me crying. <laughs> I know how <laughs> cruel kids can be. And I'm like, because my daughter, she'll say, she'll say, my, my mom has AIDS. And, you know, I know how cruel can be, cool kids can be um, at school. And then I'm thinking, my sister told me today, if you don't tell your story, who could you not look at the people that you're not helping? So I'm thinking, I was like, okay, I turned my 15th. I celebrate every July 25th, my anniversary. Mm-hmm. My birthday is coming up. And I said, you know, I don't celebrate. My birthday is March 31st. I don't celebrate my birthday. I celebrate life. And yes, I, I'm thinking, okay, I don't want to tell my story no more. It's, it's just becoming redundant. It's repetitive. And I've had people say, well, how can you tell me? That um, that to be abstinent when you you have a daughter and you, I, I can only educate on what I've been through, because mm-hmm. I started I didn't have I had low self esteem for a while and I'm still mm-hmm. struggling with that self esteem, and um, I put myself I, you look I look back I'm look back on my 44 years and I'm like it could have been worse I have I've known people that die. The diet of and it listening to you and doing this podcast makes me want to. I'll continue as as I can to tell my mm-hmm. story and to help as many people as I can. Because I was today was going to be my last day of telling my story to educate. Because I'm like, ain't nobody really listening. And you you like. I wish if I can just touch one person, two people, just teach people, then I've done, my life is complete. I'm happy. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to continue telling my story as, as long as I can. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> um, I um, have a group of survivors, we go to um, Safe Alliance and we talk to the ladies at Safe Alliance and share our stories. I would love mm-hmm. for you to go with us next month and Ooh, share your story with the ladies mm-hmm. there. I um, and I would, I would love to have you. They would welcome you. Um, we will welcome you. Um, please don't stop. Please keep going. We need oh. you. <laughs> um, oh, so said December was national Tell, tell me again what the date is in December. Uh, December 1st is World AIDS Day. Okay, so for World AIDS Day, I would like to talk to you about us doing something to something in the community mm-hmm. to educate people and mm-hmm. try to get people tested and something like that. I want us to talk about doing something um December 1st so um I want to invite you to go with us to Safe Alliance next month and I also would love to partner with you so on December 1st we're doing something in the community even if it's something small um because it it has to happen especially everywhere it has to happen but definitely here in Charlotte it needs to happen we need to shake up some people (laughs) to do something shaking up I would love to um 
keep in touch with me. Keep in touch with me. I definitely will. You will be hearing from me more and more, young lady. So <laughs> um, I'm so proud of you um, for sharing your story. There's um, one thing I had a question about before we stop. Um, can you tell us briefly what PrEP is? Um, because I've never heard of that before. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's a pill of Chivada. I was on it. Um, that was one of my regimens. And it's supposed to suppress the HIV um, transmission. And what they do is they give it to HIV negative, HIV negative and an HIV positive couple. Um, they give okay. it to the HIV negative person to help them keep from um, getting the disease. Um, okay. Um, there are prep classes that are teach you more about Travada, um, but it's they it says it's work it's, it's successful um, because they okay. is a lot of people on it is mostly um, homosexuals males but we have okay. women that also take it. Um, my boyfriend doesn't he doesn't take it um, because it also okay. it also messes up your kidneys also so. Mm. Yeah, so it, it's some everything has side effects. effects. Yes, it's <laughs> ups and downs on that medication, but they do that, and I still say I still push condoms, condoms, any kind yeah. of um, prophylactic measures to take. Okay. Yes. So abstinence is preferred, but using oh, yeah. condoms. Oh. Getting tested before you have sex, not after you have sex. Yeah, getting yeah, tested yeah. together before you have sex. Make it a date night. Go to the clinic, <laughs> get tested, and yeah. then go celebrate afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Baby, meet me at the health department on baseball road. Let's go get tested. <laughs> then we can have dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see. I, I remember asking someone once, and he got so offended that I asked him. When was the last time he was tested? But guess what? I did not continue dating him because I was like, I would think that you would have more respect for me asking than for me not to ask at all. And the fact that he got so offended raised my alarms to know that I didn't want to go any further with him. And I never slept with him. And thank God. I mean, I don't think that he has HIV or AIDS. And I've never talked to him again afterwards. But just the fact that he was offended that I asked him um, was an alarm to me that something wasn't right. Even if he was negative, it's just mm -hmm. to me, I would respect a man more if he was to say, you know, hey, before we do this, let's go get tested together. Or, hey, I just got tested. Here are my papers. Can I see yours? I would have yeah. so much more respect for a person who is open um, with sharing their status or wanting to do it with me. To me, that's a sign of love and caring for me. But as a single person, you know, I've noticed that it's more women who's actually cautious than men. Mm -hmm. You know, you're telling me, man, I'm HIV positive. Oh, that's okay. We can do this, or I, you can't. I can't get it. I'm just a kid. You know, uh, I met someone to say I'm just a carrier. Um, I can still mm -hmm. have undetected sex. No, you mm -mm. can't. You cannot. <laughs> yeah. You cannot. You know, there's different strands of HIV, and they tell you that. Then they also tell you, well, if she has, um, if she's undetectable, it's hard to transmit to another person, which is true, because it's hard to transmit to another person, but you still need to use barriers. You, right. you can never trust anybody, what anybody says, but this is what they're teaching, um, telling us mm -hmm. to teach people. You don't have, you can't catch HIV if her CD4 count is uh, up and her uh, viral load is undetectable. I still say use protection. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think that's a very safe way to educate people. Um, no. If there's different strands of it, which I, I did not know, so I just learned something. Um, mm -hmm. But 
still, you're still HIV positive. Mm -hmm. um, a, you could get sick, you can have a cold, which takes your immune mm -hmm. system down. And yes. then now you're, 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 you're exposed. I don't think that that's a good practice to tell people that if you're HIV positive, you're HIV positive. Doesn't matter what your strain is. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter if your your levels are up or down. You're still HIV positive. You still need to protect yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I looked up um, Truvada, and it says that it's a one daily pill can help prevent HIV. It says Truvada for PrEP, which is pre exposure, some name that I can't pronounce. <laughs> is a prescription medication that can help reduce the risk of getting HIV through sex, HIV one through sex when taken every day and used together with, with safer sex practices. So and even the website says you still use it with safer sex practices. Mm -hmm. You just don't take this pill and say, Oh, I'm not going to get HIV. You, you can't do that. So that's the same. With condom or something or, and you know, yeah. I've met run into people, not to prolong your uh, podcast, but I've run into people oh, no, uh, that will say, you know, that condom can't fit. Oh, yes, it can. It can fit. You don't have to go get a magnum. Everybody can't wear a magnum condom. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's what I tell people. Everybody can't wear a magnum condom. If that's you, true. If you put on a regular uh, Trojan, it can go over your head. So if it could go over your head, you could put it on. If it's not comfortable, then you don't need to have sex. That's exactly. <laughs> I can't wear a condom. I'm allergic to it. Then you don't need to have sex then. I agree. Yes. And us women have to have condoms too. We can't depend on mm -hmm. a man to always have a condom. It's okay. Health department give away free condoms. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Go and get some free condoms put it in your purse with the change. Like, you know, when your mom said, if you got to have, make a phone call. <laughs> yes. If you, you got to have sex, you have condoms in your purse. <laughs> you can change. You might have to call a Lyft or Uber because he might not take you home. But right. at least you know, at least you know, you dodged the bullet because this, being HIV positive is hard. Yes, to, it is. It's very hard. You have the medication. You have to go to the doctor every three months. Then you have opportunistic infections that you can catch. You have uh, to worry about going out and catching the flu and somebody coughing on you and being sick. And then it's it's a lot. And I don't want anybody mm -hmm. to go through what I've gone through and what I've been through. That's just when you know you can prevent it. That twelve dollars or whatever, however, how much those condoms are, looks really good to me. Mm -hmm. If I could turn back the hands of time, and I say I say this all the time, this all the time. If I didn't go on that chat room, then I could. I don't have to worry about. Wonder if I die, my child is, you know, my child doesn't have anybody to care for her or. You know, that goes through my mind sometimes. Or I wish I would have killed him. That that goes through my mind all the time. And, you know. I'm sure. Because he, he yeah. obviously doesn't have any respect for you or himself or anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, none. And then um, I met some of the girls that he infected. He infected me and several others. And um, mm. we got together when they told me he was being paroled. And, um we were wondering if that if that's uh, attempted murder why is he getting paroled mm -hmm. and he could be on any social media trying to do it all over again so be careful on I can't stress how to be careful on who you meet who you um, I posted something on my Facebook about it was it was about a man, a woman who met a man on Facebook. I think you reposted it. And it was, she yeah. had the man on Facebook and mm -hmm. they had sex. He, she mentioned the condom. He said it was too late. But then he, he, she, they parted ways and he blocked her on Facebook and she got sick and was HIV positive. And she and didn't pregnant. Know. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that part. But yeah, yeah, that's uh -huh. horrible. That post made, that post made me famous. I didn't have so many people sharing my post ever, <laughs> but I'm I glad mean, because that means that people are we're paying attention. 
Yeah. You go on YouTube, you go on YouTube, you'll see a lot of that because their famous their famous thing is their statement is welcome to my world. And mm. that that stuck in that continuously stuck sticks in my head. He said, Welcome mm. to my world. So he must be going through the same thing I'm going through with doctors and everything because when you know, like I told my mom, my pregnancy was not a good pregnancy at all. Mm -hmm. You know, then I have to go to the doctor every day. I think when you're pregnant, normal pregnancy, you go every other whatever. I had to go every day. I have like a thousand. I still have my that seemed like a thousand ultrasounds, and I, mm -hmm. I had doctors. Oh, this, I was a at risk pregnancy because I was 35 mm -hmm. and. I was HIV positive. Um, mm -hmm. I, all I could hear was HIV positive. No, she. They said AIDS. We have an AIDS patient. Get ready to give birth. I'm like, okay. Then um, I had people say, "Well, do you want to have another?" No, I, I got my tubes tied. That was my decision to get my tubes tied at 35 with one mm -hmm. child. Usually they don't do that, but um. Then I heard them say, well, you should tie your tubes. Or you shouldn't have any more. Do you want a C-section or do you want vaginal birth? I say, can I choose? Because, you know, with a C with vaginal birth, usually they didn't do it. Um, I've, yeah. I've had to deal with, um, I went to the dentist a couple of months ago. I told my doctor this today. Went to the dentist two months ago. I stayed there for two why I was with them trying to figure out who's gonna who's gonna um examine me, who's gonna deal with my teeth. So I'm like, this is crazy because they read your chart and they see you HIV positive, don't nobody want to help. So yeah. this is how people come out of come out of uh medical care. The stigma, right. the ignorance. We have to stop mm -hmm. it. It's just it does safe. have to stop. Yeah. Well, I am so happy that you talked to us again, and I'm very proud of you. Please Thank do you. not stop sharing your story. Please do not stop advocating. Um, I would like to partner with you on a couple of projects, um, and I, I truly appreciate you for talking to us because you didn't know me when I approached you, and it was I was a little nervous approaching you because I didn't know how to approach you because um, I wanted to be respectful, but I'm glad mm -hmm. that I did. Um, and I'm so very, very, very um, honored that you um, talked to me um, for the Speak Up and Inspire series, because you definitely have inspired me. And I'm sure that everybody that's watching, you've inspired them as well. Thank you. I enjoyed it. I was nervous at first, but I, I'm glad I did this. Good. I told you, it's nothing but love and support here. You're not going to get anything else because I'm not going to have it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy. Thank you for having me. I thank my friend for tagging me. Um, I'm just thankful that hopefully I've inspired someone and touched someone and they can always request my friendship on Facebook. I'm very open. Um, I might have a little rants and raves, but I'm, <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very friendly. Believe me, I'm very friendly and I like to keep it real. That's me. So if somebody wanted to talk to you more, um, maybe for you to come speak or to um, join their advocacy program um, or just to talk to you in private, because um, maybe maybe they are they have HIV and AIDS and they don't have anyone to talk to or maybe they just want some education. How can they get in contact with you on social media? Um, my Facebook is Felicia underscore that's F E L I S H A underscore more 74 at yahoo.com. Um, they can get in touch with me and uh, my email is the same as my um, Facebook, Instagram. I'm on um, I'm Angel Baby A N G E L B A B I 28208. Um, send me a a friend request and we can talk I'm very I'm willing to listen um, I have resources that I can help anyone get into care find a case manager um, if, even if you just just want to talk I'm here for you
Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Felicia. And that wraps it up for our episode tonight. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, I, of course, will follow up with some links to get in contact with Felicia. I'll also be uploading this to YouTube so that you can watch it again and share with your family. Um, and I will be doing a blog post um, uh, review with a review of our talks tonight with Miss Felicia Moore, HIV.